<laughs> Much like my climbing skills, I've learned that all of my power is in my legs. <laughs> so I like to do it this way. <laughs> Just ease. <laughs> and sometimes a little stretch. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Genevieve and I am a born and raised Floridian. I've been on the road since September of 2015, so it's just over two years. Over here in the shadows is my little road dog, Sailor, and this is our little happy home. Decided I was gonna buy a vehicle, start living in it, travel cross country, and just figure out where my place was from there. Originally, one of the reasons I went on the road was because my full-time employer had fired me from my full-time position and then offered me a contract position. And as I was working from home, I realized I had an opportunity to work from anywhere. This is gonna be the quickest tour ever. <laughs> and you can come in. <laughs> right now, it's like basically just a big bed, <laughs> which is super cozy and comfortable. I've just modified things without doing any carpentry as I've lived in it. Basic stuff, I put in a tabletop or something like that, but everything else is just modular, like storage compartments that are underneath my bed, which is rather inefficient. I went from a career as a professional dancer into working in marketing. Well, I worked for Camel Cigarettes. <laughs> I thought like having paid time off and benefits and being able to take vacations, that was gonna be my key to like world travel. And the more that I worked, even though I had more and more time off and more of a salary, I, I, I had so much more restrictions on my lifestyle. So I have some Rubbermaid boxes. Right now it's just storing camping chairs and a few other things I don't use as frequently. My heater, which I never use. The guy I bought it from ripped out the original pieces except for the fridge and the closet and built in these two by four framed out benches. But most of my storage is under here and really hard to access. I decided to go into van life, I guess you could say. <laughs> I was in a position where a, a relationship had ended and it was pretty devastating and my job had ended. I just found myself had, with nothing to lose. And it was either I do this and make myself really happy or I keep being miserable. I did it. <laughs> I've started trying to use um, mason jars to contain all of my bulk goods, but then like my daily stuff, like my books and things that I use every day, toothbrush, I just kind of leave out, which I don't like at all because it's so cluttered. My camper itself was like a whole process. I take buying decisions very seriously. So I did a lot of research before buying a vehicle. A lot of it was just looking at Craigslist. My budget was five to $10,000 and I was hoping to stay under 7,500. And so I started looking at Chinooks and other Toyota mini motor homes. I found this bandit 45 minutes from my front door in Orlando, Florida. I hemmed and hawed about it, formed a good relationship with the guy selling it so that when he got another offer, he called me right away and was like, look, this guy offered me 6,000 for it. And he said he's gonna be here today with cash in hand. And I was like, I will be there an hour before him with the same amount of money and I'm gonna buy it. And he was like, good, cause I like you better. <laughs> my focal point on buying a vehicle for myself was that it was safe that it wouldn't leave me stranded on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere, that I could always jump in the driver's seat and drive away if I ever got sketched out or bad vibes. One of the things that I didn't like about it was how small it was originally. I wanted more space. I didn't think I could downsize that small that quickly. So I kind of just forced myself to do it because I wanted to get on the road and leave Florida. So right now I just use a Coleman stove take it out, put it on the ground or a picnic table. Sometimes I'll set up some rocks to put it on and cook outdoors, which is lovely because I get to live outdoors full time. Sailor, my road dog, is a rescue. I really wanted to get something that could go, like, you know, keep up with me in an outdoor lifestyle, but also um, was a, a partner and like a companion dog. So I'd looked at both rescues and shelters, kind of became like part of my road trip. If you pay attention, when you're driving on roads, there's often brown signs that say animal shelter for city and county shelters. So I was stopping at every one that <laughs> I was going past 
when people asked me what kind of dog I wanted, I just said, I want a wolf bear. <laughs> and he was this little wolf with a bear body and a bear shaped face. A friend had recommended I start following the Facebook page for a shelter in Gardena. I went there a few days later. I like kneeled down and kind of called him over and he just came and buried his head in my chest. And I just like wrapped my arms around him and I looked up at the volunteer and I was like, I'm gonna go home with this dog. <laughs> really the story of my life in Joshua Tree was like the pivotal point of me living on the road. One of my first weekends out here, I met a character and a human being <laughs> named Hobo Greg. <laughs> Honestly, we were collecting just natural vegetation, like scrub and branches, things that were down to burn them, not knowing that that's illegal out here. He educated my friends and I on that the first night we were here and then woke up the next morning and Hobo was like, what do you want to do today? And I was like, teach me dirtbag things. <laughs> Um, so I hopped in the back of a pickup truck. <laughs> we did dirt bag things all day, scrambled to the top of some rocks, cooked a meal in the Dutch eat with a bunch of friends that are now like lifelong friends in my family. The lifestyle just seemed to fit so well and I became friends with all of the dirt bag climbers before I even started climbing and it was them that encouraged me to start climbing. That's why I say I was a dirt bag before a climber because I'm always around my vehicle. But it's nice because my vehicle is always outdoors, so my home is lots of different beautiful places. This is my fridge. Um, and it does still work. Unfortunately, my battery is drained, so it does not work right now. But it has food in it. I leave it open at night when it's cold, <laughs> and then I shut it during the day. So it stays coolish. I keep mostly just like bread, some cheese, butter. I'm a big butter fan. <laughs> I just went to the farmer's market and bought an obscene amount of ghee. Being a professional dancer for most of my life and then working in a corporate like mindset, I had to like get to a place where I just like let go of like having to control like being efficient at every minute. So I definitely do a lot of chilling. <laughs> I need a shower. <laughs> Real bad. When was the last time you showered? Last Tuesday at the hot spring. Oh yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. I've been trying to do it every week. I feel like every part of road life is more of a challenge. Thank you. On the way. Boost. Ready, go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I feel like the days just kind of fill up themselves with normal living. So usually when people ask me what I do, I just say I'm living. <laughs> living outdoors is like having a theme park in your backyard. You can go swimming, you can go paddle boarding, you can go kayaking. So I, I like to just take the options as they come, but keep living. So it's funny having a closet in a van because most people don't have that, but I've learned to like it because I can put my jackets and some of the bigger stuff that doesn't fold down compactly in them. But they also made it, so it's got this like telescoping thing, which is dumb because my clothes go front to back. So if I want something from the back, it's like a whole thing. So I put my city clothes in the back that never get worn. <laughs> <laughs> when I first went on the road, I said one to two years. <laughs> now that I've hit the two year mark, there's definitely been a moment that I've just been exhausted and like question why I'm still doing this, but I don't see it ending anytime soon. Dude, tonight's gonna be a good night. Yeah. Are you still filming? Yeah. God damn it. <laughs>